subscribers to New Orleans Football got access to all of our news analysis. Pretty soon, training camp reports. They get the live viewing of these shows, and there will be bonus episodes during training camp. So make sure you sign up today. Use the code NOF, save 20% off your first payment. Welcome back to another episode of New Orleans Football, presented by PJ's Coffee. We are coming to you from the Oshner Health Podcast Studio up on Veterans Memorial Boulevard, right next door to my guy, Matt Bowers. If you need a new car, make sure you check him out at one of his many locations today. We got a great show for you guys. We're going to start previewing training camp. We're going to talk about what's going on with the Alvin Kamara situation and so much more. So stick with us right after this quick word from our great, great sponsors. Oshner Health inspires healthier lives and stronger communities through a combination of standard setting expertise, quality, and connection not found anywhere else in the region. To learn more about how Oshner empowers people to get well and stay well, visit oshner.org. Long live you. The New Orleans Dot Football Show is proudly presented by PJ's Coffee. PJ's Coffee has some of the best drinks that you can find. They have locations all over the city. They have pastries and everything else you need to get your day started. So go check them out. Time for a new watch? Go check out Friend and Company Fine Jewelers' wide array of Breitling watches at their showroom on Maple Street. They have every type of watch that you want, and they can get you right for any type of occasion. And while you're there, check out their engagement salon. They'll make sure you find the perfect ring for that special someone. Their experienced staff offer five-star customer care to help you find the perfect watch, ring, or whatever else you're looking to buy. Visit them today. Friend and Company Fine Jewelers, 7713 Maple Street between Adams and Burdett. 504-866-5433, or visit them at friendandcompany.com. Looking for the best insurance coverage at the lowest price? Look no further than Chabert Insurance, the Earhart Agency. They are a local independent insurance agency right here in New Orleans, specializing in home, flood, and auto insurance. Their agents are born and raised in the area and understand our community's unique needs and the homeowner's insurance crisis our residents are currently in. At Chabert Insurance, the Earhart Agency, Their dedicated team will shop every available carrier in the market, ensuring you get the most comprehensive coverage at the lowest possible price. They know your time is valuable, which is why they work diligently to provide you with the quotes as soon as possible. Why settle for less when you can have the best? Trust Shawbear Insurance, the Earhart agency, to protect what matters most to you. I do. I've been a client of theirs since 2021. When we couldn't find someone to insure our house because of the big oak tree growing over top, Shawbear worked until they found someone that would work with us and give us the protection that we need to feel safe in our new home. Call them today at 504-326-6526 or visit them online at Protected by Shawbear. That's 504-326-6526. Shawbear Insurance, the Earhart Agency, your local insurance experts. Hard Hide Punch Tool Strawberry Whiskey is an 86 proof blend of aged wheat bourbon, American light whiskey, and fresh Punch Tool strawberries. Blended in New Orleans, it is not for the thin-skinned. Look for it in your favorite stores, bars, and restaurants. New Orleans Stop Football is proud to be sponsored by Firehouse Subs. Make sure you check out their location on Veterans Boulevard. All right, let's get into the show. Welcome back to the Oshner Health Podcast Studio. It is now time for the lead presented by Friend and Company Fine Jewelers. Friend and Company Fine Jewelers are the official jewelers of the New Orleans Saints, and they should be your official home for your next watch. Go down to their Maple Street location, check them out. Ken and his team will get you a great Breitling watch. They'll get you right for any occasion. And while you're there, check out their engagement salon to get your special lady that special ring for that special question. Let's hit the lead topic, guys. Which Saints need to have a standout training camp? Over the last two weeks, we've talked about the top position battles. Who are we most excited to see out there? But now it's inching closer. We're getting more exciting because training camp is here come next week. So who needs to stand out the most? Derek Carr, I think, is a good place to start. I didn't even have him on my list. I think it's imperative for him to fit in this offense and look good in it and just kind of be on the right flow with his receivers. Mm -hmm. You want to see the timing down a little bit better than what kind of how they ended last season. You want to see that from the start. I don't really know that there were huge warning signs in training camp last year, but I think we kind of know a little bit more what to look for in terms of that process and and just everything kind of happening on schedule, on speed, on time, you know, yeah. is imperative, I think, for this upcoming season. Yeah, I probably would have had Derek Carr first on my list, too, if we had seen any signs of concern in OTAs in minicamp, and we didn't. You actually said he might have been the MVP, so yeah, it, I mean, yeah. it feels like... Um, it feels like he's he's picking things up smoothly. 
No, we did not see warning signs last summer. In fact, he looked great, and he got us way too excited. I mean, right up through that first preseason game where well, they went down and scored a touchdown, it's like, everything looks great. <laughs> here's, here's the reason. we I guess we wouldn't see it now, and we didn't see it then, because the issue with Carr is like when there's pressure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Really, that's the story of the whole season, and really, I'm guessing your answer is going to be Trevor Penning, and I'm not trying to take it from <laughs> yeah, you, yeah. but but I mean, I really think that's that's the other one, because... Yeah. Derek starts getting pressure. He starts making bad decisions. He starts fighting with his teammates. Things start unraveling. <laughs> yeah. The offense no falls Gets apart. Quick. It, yeah. it infects the locker room. So no that's kind of that's kind of where you see the You've issues. heard me say it a million times. The other thing we never see in training camp is we never see them lose three yards on first down. So now it's second and 13. And that's what happened as soon as yeah. they started playing games. So everything's going to look better in training camp. But yes, I absolutely, the names I wrote on my list are Guys who, if they don't perform in August, they don't get to play in September. That is not true for Derek Carr, yeah. obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, but obviously nothing's more important to the team than the quarterback learning this offense. So you, your answer is great. But yeah, Trevor Penning, without question. I mean, he's got to prove he can win that job. Otherwise, there might never be a job for him. Um, and the other name I had, I, I've got a couple in that same category. I mean, Peyton Turner's in the exact same category. That was my uh, I think I think the stakes are a little lower for Peyton Turner because... He's not even getting a chance to start. He's mm. just getting a chance to stay on the team. And, and Elante Taylor, I put in that same category. It's more of a position battle thing, but if he lets Kool-Aid McKinstry beat him out this summer, he's got nowhere else to turn. So so those are the first three names on let's, my list. Let's press pause on that for a second. Like, Let's go back to Penning. Yeah. Say he blows this. Yeah. He, he looks bad, doesn't keep his job, loses his job. He's played on the right side. He's played on the left side. Does he get another year in the NFL? Yeah, like his, his contract is guaranteed. He will keep get coming cut, around, though, right? Like they I, don't bring him back for another year if he if he loses out again. I, I think that's the. I think this no. is. I think this is do or die on his NFL. Career. I don't think he gets cut this summer. He Not sticks this summer, around after this, after this season, but then he, he gets a year? full off season and a full training camp before they have to make that decision. I don't so, think he does. How many of those does he get? How many of those does he get? Yeah, I don't yeah. think he sees it either. I, I don't see yeah. the incentive on letting him get it because you've seen you move them from this side of the field to that. It's it's not even worth it. I mean, the contract is fully guaranteed. It, it's why Peyton Turner is still here. You're you saying he gets you camp next year, though. Like He, he, you, he gets you, all the way through camp you, next year. Right. I'm saying I don't like a think season. they cut him this year. A season, though. Like, yes. I don't think he gets another but season. But I'm saying failing this August, he still gets next August, too. Well, he gets too. replaced, but, though. But I don't think... I don't, he's not in the plans anymore. This is his last chance to, to be in the plans. Otherwise, his career looks like... Landon Young, who could probably be on this list. I mean, he, he's not on my list. But you know what I mean? Or, you know... Guys get to stick around till the end of their contract sometimes, but they just fade into the background. That's what happens to him, I think. But they stop. But they stop the giving him of, chances. The problem yeah. with Trevor is that, and like he could fix this, but last year he was beyond the point of usefulness. Like, yeah, this could, true. This could it's possibly this could possibly be that camp where it's like if you don't show something like that, this is it. Like this yeah, could be it that could. camp. It yeah. absolutely could. It happens to guys sometimes. There's no question about it. I mean, he is bordering on. This was a little before your time, but Saints fans, uh, Jim Rapier will remember this. Jonathan Sullivan. I mean, yeah. they gave up on him after all. They he, they drafted him really high. They like traded up to like number six, and I think it was his third camp when they were like, "We just got to, we just got to get him out of here at this." point. How far did Stephon Anthony go? How many years did he get? He got three. Well, but they traded him, didn't they? Or did they cut him? He got I think cut. they didn't they trade him. Uh, now I'm. I got you. We're, we're going to lose my up. memory here or whatever. But you're right. I mean, and guys like Garrett Grayson and Ian oh, Book didn't get other chances. Miami, yeah, right? yeah. Mm -hmm. for uh, Ellerby. That was but, the Ellerby trade. No, no, Ellerby was Kenny Stills. But I do remember <sighs> that, but I couldn't remember Stefan Anthony. But it was a giveaway he trade. He got a pick. He got a pick. fifth. They got yeah, a fifth. Yeah, yeah, yeah it, was a, Miami, it was a giveaway yeah. trade. But still, absolutely. Like, that they've a, given up on guys before. That was like a CJ trade. Like, cut, but like they got something for guys. Look, like, if Trevor Penning reaches the point where he can't be active on game days as the seventh That's what lineman, I'm this could be then, it. Yeah, then you need the spot at a I'm certain not, point. I'm not there with it yet, but yeah. I mean, it's like it's everything, everything's within the, in the realm of possibility. Yeah. And that is true for Peyton Turner on this list, too. I, now, look, I have always remained kind of high on Peyton Turner's upside. And then Tano Passing, you got hurt. So that removed a little of the glut at defensive end. So I think there's a spot for him. But what Peyton Turner is battling now is if you're not going to be active, if Isaiah Foskey is better than you and you're our fifth defensive end and you're not going to be active on game days, then we don't need. So that he needs to prove that 
he's useful on game days. He doesn't get any more. The, what you know, this is the last year of his contract, so yeah. the clock is really ticking from. Alante Taylor stays on this team no matter what. I think mm-hmm. he plays special teams. Oh, Alante's someone gets here. hurt, no. but he could be a guy that is playing five defensive snaps a game if he doesn't. He's useful though. Yeah. In yes. a, it's yeah. like in a pinch. Like the problem with Trevor last year is that in a pinch you, you can't rely him. on him. Yeah. yeah, yeah, no question. Um, I have a few other names on the list, but those, those to me are the guys who are like. My my career mortality is at stake. Did you guys have anyone before? Less I, severe than yeah. Trevor and Peyton Turner. I had Kendra Miller. He has to be yeah. able to step up. Maybe I put I put At Perry in the same line as him. Okay, yeah. Which we're still really high on those guys, but mm-hmm. but if you want to keep your you know between young, those exciting, two, upside who are you, you got to show it. Yeah. yeah, between those two, who I think are you it's like way down on the list, and it's a little bit unfair. But like Bub Memes, I think has to have a really good yeah. camp too, because like I, I think. And Cedric Wilson and everybody else, like, yeah. and At Perry is why well, I throw him in there. Like you got to show you can block. Like like St. Brown can block. St. Brown's there to take somebody's job if one of these guys fail in the more physical aspects of, of the game. So I think everybody at receiver behind the the top couple of guys, I think everybody's kind of on notice because there is decent depth there and there's aspects of this that you got to show it. Like I don't think they're looking at Chris Olave to be a blocker. No. They aren't looking at Rashid to be a blocker. So like. Somebody else is going to get a lot of yeah. snaps in these personnel sets. They like to go just to two in this offense. They don't, you know, they use three, but at a lower rate than everybody else in the league. So they got to show it. And somebody, one of these other receivers is going to get a good amount of snaps over one of these guys. Yeah, I think that could be Cedric Wilson. But Equinemius St. Brown had such a good spring that he kind of like, he's, he's a like, blocker. If you guys mm-hmm. can't do it, I can. So yeah, he, he, he increased there. Look, Pete Werner's on this list. Um, I think he's part of the, you know, I, I don't think he's going to lose his job to Willie Gay based on camp, especially since he looked so good this spring and they didn't do the thing where they traded every other day. I think they're going to give Pete Werner every chance to win this job, but but he's a guy on this list. Uh, another one that I put on here, I think, is Jake Hayner from, from the career mortality standpoint. If he lets Spencer Rattler beat him out this August, then he might not even make the 50. They might expose him to waivers and be like, yeah, yeah. we'll keep you on the practice squad, but Hayner has to prove he's ahead of Rattler now. Uh, if he doesn't, if he loses that job, that backup job this yeah. summer, he doesn't have a long term future here. No, no. He, he's done yeah. a job doing that there in the spring, just of kind of trying to widen that yeah. gap for himself. But speaking about uncertainty on the team, Alvin Kamara, yep. you know, he he posted an update today. This is going to be our next segment presented by New Orleans Hamburg and Seafood Company. What is an update on Alvin Kamara? He posted his IG story. So as of two fifteen p.m. on Wednesday, obviously a fluid situation because. Anytime there's a contract situation or whatever, yeah. one phone call can change it. So by the time this thing goes out 7 o'clock to the people that just get it on the on the general release, like this story could change. But as of right now, 215, there's nothing happening. Like there's nothing happening. It's not close. It's not moving. Um, you know, there's been exchanges of, of offers. I, I think that number is still lower than than what they're hoping to get. So... We'll see on that situation. I, I do believe he's going to play. Like, I, I you know, I, I was checking up to see, like, you know, what's going to happen day one at training camp. Too soon to know that. I mean, mm. it's just too far away. Like, there's so much that could happen between Wednesday and Tuesday to change this situation. One conversation, it could just be, like, a feeling of, of momentum and good faith could get him on the field without a new deal. Or he could just decide, you know what, I'm going to go for it. And I'm going to have a great season. And I'm going to get paid by somebody else next off season. Whatever it is, a lot could change. But as of right now, it's too soon. And, you know, I'm not I, – I didn't get the sense that it was like there's a couple little hurdles and this thing's going to get done. I, I, didn't, I didn't get the sense that there was a lot of momentum. Yeah, a reminder, even though Alvin has some uh, leverage because of his importance to the team, the last CBA, you know, this is not like when um, – Alvin Kamara was in a contract negotiation the last time at the end of his rookie deal. They make the rules different for veterans than they do for guys who are still on the rookie year deal. They're different for the guys who are under the franchise tag. You get fined significantly every day if you are a veteran and don't come out. So, I mean, if Alvin decided to miss two weeks of camp, that would be a huge sum of money. So he would have to really be committed to, like, really threatening to just not play at all. And I don't know if it's going to be that serious or not. I mean, that's something... We're gonna find out. Uh, you know, I, I still if, don't know if he's how it not ends gonna up, practice, yeah. he's, he's gonna get. A, he's gonna pick up an injury. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's gonna get sick. Yeah. You know? yeah. So you know, gotta know the game. Yeah. It's yeah. Uh, it's tough. I the mean, Irvine influenza like is gonna strike. Like it's gonna be. It's gonna be something. You know. I mean, that's just how it goes. It's it's always. It nobody nobody holds out. People show up and just don't work. Like this right. is kind of kind of how it is now. 
I I feel like someone's going to have to bend here, though. Like I, I bet I my gut tells me the Saints would be willing to guarantee him money next year, but will they be able to guarantee him guarantee him money beyond next year? I I, I would not be surprised if they draw a line well, in the sand there. If I'm if I'm Alvin though, like I I, I would take that because like, I'm not playing as a running back at 29 on a on a one year deal with nothing guaranteed beyond this season. Mm-hmm. Man, that's dangerous. Like. And let's say he plays out this season. He plays out this season. He's going to be 30 years old. Is he going to get more than a one year anywhere? No. Anywhere. He does does not want to be. The reason he's he's doing this, he does not want to be a free agent 30-year-old running back next year. No way. That's where it's headed. And, and, you know, regardless, unless he has, like, the C-Mac type season, like, I think his ceiling probably on one-year deals is is probably the Derrick Henry thing. Like, people just aren't going to pay 10, 11, 12 million dollars for a 30-year-old running back. So do you think they give him... 10 next year, 8 guaranteed, and, and everyone ends up happy with something like that? I don't know if he gets 10, but I mean, yeah. like, if I, if I were him, I, I mean, I would, I would be, it's tough, man, because, like, if you're Alvin Kamara, you're an athlete, you've willed yourself to everything throughout your life, like, you're always going to bet on yourself, but I would have a hard time doing that in his situation. I, I would want something in the bank for next season, because... He is legitimately a hit away. Like, he's 29 years yeah. old. If he gets an injury, like, he's never going to, he could come back and be great, but if he, gets cut down in week eight with some type of injury and doesn't play again, what's he getting next year? He's going to get two, three, four million dollars yeah. maybe at that age coming off an injury. It's it's a high, high but risk. But then what happens next year? Does he do this again next year if it's just one year? Like, I don't know. He it's can't. Tough. I mean, it's tough. I know. Tough. You got some money in the bank, like you're protected. You could do it every year if you want. Like, yeah. you could keep trying to do it. Um, it would be, it would be, I just think it would be I feel like on his It's part. two sides that should come together, but tell me what the right answer is, and I, I, I have trouble coming up with it. Yeah. yeah. If I'm the Saints, I can't guarantee him more than $8 million next year. Okay, I guarantee the eight and let him make 10 or something like that. You know what <laughs> yeah. I mean? I have two but, on guarantee. And even then, that's one year, and he's not going to be happy next year. Or, give him, in, or give, him, give him eight and tie $2 million to showing up to the offseason program. Like, he doesn't, yeah, he doesn't, true. like, I think it's, Im- yeah, it's incentivizing. I yeah. think it's important for him to be here, but he's not, yeah, he's not incentivized right. enough to do it. So, mm-hmm. If you want him to be here to set the tone, be a leader, all stuff, like, do that. Like, there's ways around it. I mean, I don't know that he's going to get the 12 million that he's sitting on now. Like, but that's kind of, that's got to go a little bit. Back to Kenry Miller being in that first segment. Huge year for him because they're going to want the heir apparent in the building so that they can have a stronger negotiating standpoint. And if Kenry Miller's not going to be that guy, it's going to be another third round pick next year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just to be thorough on the topic, he posted again on his story, this time a workout video. So it's like at this point of the evolution of like this wavering period, it's not hearing stuff through the grapevine because people, they tell you directly what they want you to see because they'll post it on their own platform. Yeah, he's been, uh, he's been letting everybody know that he has an, an, an eclectic um, array of interests. Yeah. Like it's fashion, NASCAR, music, all cars, that. all this stuff. All yeah. Of that. Yeah. yeah. Well-rounded individual. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, not, I think it's all by design, though. It's just yeah, like, hey, look, nah, football sure. isn't the only thing I have in my life. Yeah. I, I think it's all by design. For sure. Now it's time to get into our next segment presented by Shaba Insurance, the Earhart Agency. Rookies reported to training camp yesterday. So this is the first time getting out there, really in there in the Southern California atmosphere. The rest of the team is going to join them next week. But you talked a little bit about the high expectations for the Top tier rookies that are on the team: Fuaga, McKinstry, Rattler. Who else could stand out this season? Who do you think could rookie stand wise? Out? Rookie yeah, wise. me and Brandon talked yeah. about this last week. It's and even Rattler doesn't have a huge chance to make an impact this year unless he wins the number two job. But yeah. do you think anyone else? Me and Brandon came up with one name that we like felt confident. Yeah. Could Holker, play snaps Holker. this year. Yeah. Holker, Holker was the yeah. only Holker's one. The only yeah. one. Yeah. No one else drafted. Just, like, drafted by like Birmingham or something like that. <laughs> yeah, so, so they draft they draft the rights. It's kind of like yeah. drafting one of these guys like the UFL, right? That's that was the league. Yeah, it's like shorting a stock almost. But I mean, so they draft the rights to him. So if he doesn't make the league, but I think Holker's at worst on the practice squad, and no one's leaving an NFL practice squad to go play yeah. there. Like yeah. you're you're too close to the league on a practice squad, even if the money were different. Yeah, the opportunity is so ripe in uh, uh, this yeah. tight end group. It's the right he's position. Not giving this up. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, maybe he's, he's may, the only name. Like, maybe Bub gets some yeah. snaps. Uh, I don't think Jalen Ford does. I, I, I'm not. I don't think it's there for for Christian Boyd yet. Uh, Ezra, I, I don't really see getting any type of snaps. 
Um, it's Schwag and, and McKinstry, really. I think those are the two that, I, that have a chance to, to really do something. It's funny how much people love this draft class for the Saints, too, and, <laughs> and we're just not going to see an instant impact from it. Just for the sake of keeping my 53-man roster Charlie intact. Charlie Smith. Charlie got to come through if he, if he makes the <laughs> roster. Yeah, I mean, that's not a bad pick. If, <laughs> if, you're, the roster. if you're throwing money on one of them, I mean, he's somebody that at least could potentially get on the field and have a big impact. Guaranteed like, a practice squad spot no matter what. So he, he's at least staying in the building all year. Yep. That's what I'm trying to see. Yeah, yeah. national pathway program. Yep. That's yep. That's, y'all see where I'm cooking at. Sure. Y'all see where I'm sure. cooking at. We're going to hit a quick break, and when we come back, we'll continue coverage going into training camp and hit the Martin's questions of the day. Keep it locked to New Orleans. Football. Total Maintenance is one of the largest locally owned home and commercial service providers in South Louisiana. They were founded in 1980 and serve the greater New Orleans and Baton Rouge markets. And Total Maintenance wants to show some love to our NOF listeners. They have a membership program that gets you two tune-up visits for AC and heating, as well as club membership discounts of 15% on all repairs, half off of all diagnostic charges, and three-year warranties on most repairs for membership clients. This is usually priced at the low price of $24.95 a month per system, but if you tell Total Maintenance that you found them through NOF, they'll lower the price to $20.95 per month per system for as long as you keep the membership active. It will never increase. Total Maintenance has a tune-up special running this summer for $79.00 down from the normal price of $179. This is a one-time offer for one system only. They also offer a free diagnostic on second opinions on units deemed to be unrepairable. And they offer free estimates for replacements as well as commercial maintenance programs. Services include AC and heating service and replacement, electrical service, plumbing service, as well as generator service and installation. They are total maintenance. Find them at tm-ac.com or give them a call at 504-841-3300 or if you're in the Baton Rouge area, 225-480-1000. There's nothing quite like the feeling of stepping into your dream home. At Jefferson Financial Federal Credit Union, we can help make that dream a reality with a team dedicated to you. When you partner with Jefferson Financial, you do so for the life of the loan. Having a single point of contact when questions arise is invaluable. Our experts are here to guide you every step of the way. There's no better time to invest in your future. Apply online at jeffersonfinancial.org. Federally insured by NCUA. Equal housing lender. Shrimp Rumelod combos are back at New Orleans Hamburger and Seafood Company. Zesty shrimp Rumelod served with fried shrimp, catfish, or soft shell crab starting at $10.99. Or try one of our spring specials, catfish Lafitte, or lemon caperfish with crab meat. Now at New Orleans Hamburger and Seafood Company. Martin Wine and Spirits is home to a selection of hand-picked barrel select bourbon, whiskeys, and much, much more. They are family owned and operated since 1946 and specialize in wine, spirits, gourmet food, gift baskets, catering, and tasting events. They have many locations, so they're never too far away. You can check them out in Metairie, New Orleans, Mandeville, and Baton Rouge. Or if it's more convenient, you can always shop online. Whether you're a wine novice or a seasoned collector, you'll enjoy the Martin Wine and Spirit experience. Welcome back to the Oshner Health Podcast Studio. It is now time for our next segment presented by Jefferson Financial Federal Credit Union. Aaron Schatz, friend of the show, he predicted that the Saints will win 9.7 games this season and have a 63% chance of making the playoffs. So what do we think about that? Is yeah, he gonna, is he going to lose his national media card for that? He just put out he put out, <laughs> he put out his almanac. Yeah, I, I liked I liked the analysis in, in, in his almanac. Check out his Twitter um, to see that Aaron, obviously uh, the inventor of DVOA and and uh, a lot of other pioneering football metrics that are influential through league offices and, and, and everything. But um, my favorite part about his, his analysis, and it's kind of like a line that we've been saying on here, is that like the Saints are like neither good nor bad. They're just, they're fine. Like they're just okay. Like, and that's kind of where they exist right now. They're yeah. just kind of, they're kind of okay. And that's a nine win team. My, my thing with them is that I think like the variance here for me, and I was kind of thinking about this this morning. Um, I think the variance is probably like seven to 10 and in a lot of seasons, you're kind of like, well, if everything, if they protect the ball, they don't get hurt. And you know, all these things go right. They could win 12 games. Like, I don't know that I see the path to 12. I don't necessarily see a path to like three either. Like it's just kind of, yeah, they should be like a mid mediocre team. Um, things that I think help them a lot is that Atlanta's defense is probably going to be terrible. I think Tampa's defense is going to be terrible. Um, the Panthers are what they are. So, like, the division being what it is props them up. But I think they are just kind of that, like, 
just it's okay like not everything has <laughs> right. to be polarizing like right. sometimes things can just be in the middle and i think that's where they're at yeah i mean aaron Schatz is a uh analytical like i mean he's not a computer but he's you know feeding information to a computer that is not putting like you know a heart and opinion and gut instinct into these and yeah rationally the saints have have won nine games twice in the last three years. They won seven the other year. That's that's what they've been, and they still kind of are. I, how many times have we heard people call the Saints a five-win team? And I'm just like, based on, like, when did they become a five-win team? They haven't been a five-win team. Well, a lot of people think they won five games last season. I know, and they won nine. <laughs> so, look, they did. I think the schedule's tougher this year, even though even though some of the numbers say it's not. I mean, it's, it's going to be tougher to get off to a, a good start playing mm -hmm. at Dallas, playing at Kansas City, playing Philadelphia in the first five weeks of the season. Um, I, I don't think the division's going to be quite as easy as it's been. But, yeah, I, I'm a little down on the Saints, and I'm picking them to go eight and nine. So this is just like a really rational. Here, here's one thing, though, that is just kind of true and disturbing about the Saints. So ESPN's doing this. Brandon and I talked about it with the running backs. Now, when Kamara last week, they're doing their polling the executives, coaches, scouts around the league and ranking the top ten at every position. And Demario Davis came in at eighth at linebacker, and and that's going to be it. That's going to be their only player on the team who's top ten at their position. And they, they're missing a little of that star power. They're listen, missing a little of that. I mean, wasn't it even the St. Brown brothers? Like, do you guys have any dogs on your team? Like, they're they're missing they're missing yeah. the headliner. They're missing the headliners on this team. But you know, I I. I Think of them as the same team as last year, and if they win the close games and they are lucky with injuries, they can be better than last year. Like, I just I don't see them way different than recent years. They and I, and they I got think a that of, they got a offensive, on the team. They yeah, got a of they got a Tyron. couple of dogs on the team, but Tyron, Tyron Demario, Demario, Olave, yeah. Alvin. Yeah. Like, he some said guys. that, not me. But what you know what I'm saying? Like those are guys who you know a lot of people around the league think are the 12th or 13th best in the league at their position or whatever. Like you know Eric McCoy just missed a list and Alvin just missed a list, and of course they do. But um, but I understand why that's the sentiment. Just to write this team off they're not a rising exciting young team um but i i you know i i think the addition of clint kubiak and the offensive staff is is as big as most any addition made anywhere i mean in theory they should be better than last year we all agree they were a big disappointment last yeah. year so. i mean look originally when the schedule came out i had them winning eight games but then after seeing the spring practices and actually some things that you said I bumped them up to nine, and, and I got a chance to see a lot of family this week, and everybody's coming with their, oh, well, you know, I think the Saints are this, I think the Saints are that. Somebody legitimately asked me, well, what do you think the ceiling is? And I was like, honestly, like 10, probably 11 if everything goes right. Yeah. And then the floor, obviously the floor can be very yeah. low. But I, I think the floor hurt, is yeah. like seven. You know what I mean? So it's like that whole midway thing where it's like, you know, this team, it can be very exciting, but... It's just at a, a a midway point right now. Yeah, I think I think the thing that Aaron wrote in here, and I'll read a little bit of it. Like he kind of sets it up with like he starts the section off talking about the end of the season last year and him and Arthur Smith's thing, and then and then Allen going in the press conference conference and saying that's not who we are, not what we're about, and he just kind of uses that to raise the question. Like you know, Breeze played his last game in 2021. Peyton last coach in 2022. And little of what's happened in the last two years is left to mark. It begs the question, who are you saints and what are you about? And I think that's actually a fair, fair question. Very like, fair. The organizational direction is kind of like, what is it? Like, what, like, are you trying to get right. better? Are you trying to get right. long term? Are you just trying to hang on for today and make the playoffs? And I think we know that their approach is just kind of try to make the playoffs and figure it out from there. Maybe that is the right approach. Maybe it isn't. But it is fair to, to ask, you know, kind of what is the direction? Because... They haven't drafted well. They haven't built a great infrastructure. Like, it's just kind of existing right now. And until something moves one way or the other, it, it is fair, especially from a distance, to sit back and say, like, what is this team? But what they are is just, they're mid. Like, they're mid. Like, that's, that's, yeah, the, and, and that's the thing. Like, people don't like, like mid. People it's, locally that follow this team don't like mid, but yeah. there's a lot of mid around there. I mean, the whole is this is not mid. what... The a very, Vikings yeah. did during the Kirk Cousins era, the Titans during the Ryan Tannehill era. Like right. it's you know, and those guys ended up with some one and two seeds along the way. Like right. it's okay to try. It's okay to try. There's a negative connotation around the word mid, but I mean, 
You could be worse. Yeah. <laughs> you could be way worse. Yeah. You could be trash. Like the Eagles won a Super Bowl being a mid team one year. Like sometimes exactly. it happens. But yeah. yeah, I mean, you you can't win if you aren't there. But I get the frustration yeah. too. Like you, you would kind of like if you're mid, you aren't winning. If you aren't winning, you'd like to feel like you're building towards right. something. And I, and you know, that logically, there's, there's, I get it, but there's also the reality when you start looking at the process of rebuilding, it doesn't work a lot of right. times. So it's just a tough place to be. You just kind of got to, I think you just, if I had to define what are the saints, if I answer that question, right. I think they're just trying to stay afloat, stay competitive, make the playoffs. And you, they're just hoping that that thing that kind of catches fire happens while they're in this position. Right. And when you're here and you get that great draft, you're a Super Bowl contender. If you're not there, you kind of get, get that great draft, and then now you're you're a playoff contender. And right. they're just trying to they're trying to hope they they get that lucky break. And I mean that's kind of what everybody's waiting for. Everybody's waiting for the Mahomes to fall in their lap or or whatever. Yeah. And that's the difference. And I don't know. I mean, but yeah, what are they? They're an average team. And that's the thing about being mid, like this holding pattern. You better be lucky in it right now because it's not going to last always. So you got to try to, like you said, build on that through the draft and different things like that. Well, one thing that can give the team a large, large boost is getting to our next segment presented by Hard High Ponchatoula Strawberry Whiskey. 49ers receiving Brandon Ayuk officially asked for a trade request from the 49ers. And, you know, he's familiar with Clint Kubiak. He played in that system yeah. last year that went to the Super Bowl. But is it possible for the Saints to get him? Granted, their situation, no. they need a receiver. But no. This is a perfect topic nope. right after the last one. Because of where the Saints are now, we, we, we talked about that. I would rather see the Saints be, you know, the young up and coming team. Everybody wants to be the Detroit Lions. Everybody wants to be, you know, whatever, what the Cincinnati Bengals were a couple years ago. And the Saints are still trying to win, but I did like that they didn't put too many resources into just trying to win for right now. They spent very limited amount of money this offseason. They spent it on young guys they're building around. They didn't trade future draft picks this time around. Mm -hmm. And I'm kind of glad they're doing that. I don't. I mean, I guess if they're choosing Ayuk over Chris Olave and they want to trade for Ayuk and sign him to a long-term contract yeah. and let Chris Olave go. Nah. But, I mean, I, I, if they're going to do this somewhere for a young player and build their future around him, I, I feel like this is the one thing they already have right. is Chris Olave. And we're already debating whether they should pay him because, uh, as I'm sure Nick will talk about, it, is the value of what receivers are getting paid right now even worth it for an NFL team? I just thought it'd same. be great if you could get him for free, but you're not getting him for free. Not it's not shot. <laughs> it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense at this point. It he's been doesn't. he's been hitting all off season that he wants to be with Jaden and them in Washington. So see if he can make it out. Would of you it. add any? Is there okay? Is there anything you would trade next to your second uh, the Marshawn Lattimore deal that we were wondering if another team would offer? Would you trade next to your second and redo a contract for any position on this team? I, I don't think that. I don't think I do. I, it's not even the trade. I, I don't think I like if he was a free agent. I don't yeah. know that I would pay. But I'm if saying, I'm what's the all position money, the Saints? If I'm paying, then I don't know. I don't know. Maybe he is, but like right now at this point, like if I'm paying a wide receiver, he has to be an absolute like scheme beater, open no matter what, yeah. absolute game changer. Otherwise, I'm just I'm going to the draft. There's too many good guys that come in the league that are that are cheap, and I will pay somebody that it's he's breaking a defense no matter what you can do whatever you want and there's only four or five of those guys in the league and i maybe he is one but i haven't seen it their scheme's so good guys are always wide open like right. maybe he hasn't been asked to showcase all that but like you know i think he's a great player i yeah. think he'll be a great player on somebody's team but like i don't know that i'm paying him 30 million dollars so just to put it kind of into perspective your list is tyreek hill number one yeah Jamar justin Chase. jefferson yeah justin jefferson yep uh, St. Brown, St. Brown made it up there. Uh, he's, he close. Up there? Yeah, he's, he's close. close. He's close. Somebody I was on the French. I, he's someone I would. He's pay. in he, the Olave he, tier for me. He's a, dude, he, he's a dude that can make seven catches a game in physical space for me. I mean, like you got to make some of those play, plays. Okay. Um, DK Metcalf. No. Devonte Adams has been there. I don't know if he's still there. Yeah, he's, that's my he, question. He's going he's forward, been he's been there. C.D. Lamb looked like it last year. Yeah, if if you if you can give me C.D. Lamb's production, I'd pay for it. The difference between between uh, St. Brown and and Crystal is like he, St. Brown, you know, is going to give you contested catches. Like mm -hmm. 
third and three NFC Championship game, like he was playing on tight coverage. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You always talk about Mike Evans being underrated, and obviously now you wouldn't pay that kind of money for him. But oh yeah, would you pay for prime Mike Evans? Oh no, is doubt. he a thirty million dollar? Easy, guy? easy. AJ you me, Brown, you give me that right now. Easy, I would pay Mike. You pay AJ Brown? No, I'm saying he's another yeah, physical quite guy. Quite possibly, he's possibly in that range. I mean, there isn't a ton of them though. There isn't okay. a ton no. of them. There's a cutoff point for sure. Like I, yeah. I don't think there's one to go around for everybody in the league. You right. know, I think no, there's I probably you. I got you. 10, 12 guys. And, and then after that, it's kind of, are they replaceable um, with draftable prospects? And a lot of them are. A lot of them are. Yeah. Hey, hope everybody get paid, but it's the business. Yeah. <laughs> That's how it is. Well, now it's time to get into our Martin Wine and Spirits question of the day. Martin's is home to a wide selection of hand-picked barrels like bourbon, whiskeys, and more. Martin's, so much more than just wine. Today's question is, for y'all, what is an article that you pre-wrote that shocked you the most when you didn't have to publish it? I'll just go first. The first one, and I, I thought it was, this is like, this is like a, what is your biggest weakness? Uh, <laughs> you know, I work too hard, like interview type questions. So I'm kind of, I'm kind of cheating here a little bit. Yeah. But I was a year early on the Jimmy Graham thing. I, and I ended up publishing the article a whole year later. I just went, I pulled it out of my draft. But like, I thought it was done. I thought it was done. I went, I wrote the article. Re the re-signing Jimmy Graham. Yeah. The, so it, yeah. Not I think last this stems year, from you acknowledging on the last show that, that one of the few times you were ever shocked was when they traded Jimmy Graham. So. <laughs> <laughs> but like, if someone came there, like, yo, they're about, like, like this, this is going down. Like, Jimmy's going to sign. Yeah. Da -da -da. I was like, oh, all right. Like, I went, I hurried up, wrote the article, and then it just... It just never happened, and then a year later it happened. So that was that was one of them for me. I wanted to find out a little more. Like, did you have a Mahomes written? Yeah, we had Mahomes ready to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It doesn't surprise me. So I mean, but you weren't shocked when it didn't happen. Like you were you were just in case ready, or you were sure ready? I was sure ready. I mean, yeah. I had great yeah. sources on that. Yeah. I had Mahomes mm -hmm. story ready to go. Everyone yeah. in the building thought it was going to happen. Yeah, I mean, I was, <laughs> I was ready to go with it. It was a hundred percent. I got a. Text that that morning from from a good source. Source, um, yeah. <laughs> and I was I was ready to go with it. I was ready to roll. That that's what so I thought that's it was gotta be. be one. Yeah, yeah, that was one. Um, man, I had three of them this morning when you. Asked I had this. one. So I feel like I have thirty two of these. Like I wish I had saved them. I I always used to joke that I should do a book. Actually, the best. I don't want to bring up bad memories, but I wrote. I thought I wrote a really good gamer when they were going to beat the Vikings during the Minneapolis Miracle a deadline gamer. I was really yeah. happy with it, and uh, um, I pre-wrote something when they were going to go to the Super Bowl against the Rams too. But um, the one that I felt sure, like this was worth putting one that came to mind that this was worth putting a lot of effort into. I was sure they were going to trade Brandon Cooks for Malcolm Butler, like. Oh yeah, I, I couldn't Malcolm believe they too, didn't yeah. end up with Malcolm yeah. Butler that year. I good thing they didn't. You know who they drafted that year instead? Marshawn Lattimore. Yeah. I wonder if they don't oh, trade Marshawn. Actually, they don't trade. They don't want Marshawn Lattimore, so they trade Mahomes instead. Maybe they should have signed Malcolm Butler. But I couldn't believe that didn't happen. I was so sure that I was going to happen. I had like a series of Malcolm Butler because it, <laughs> it took so long, that, and that's all there was. It was just waiting day that after day for that, that to kind of yeah. happen, and then and then it never did. Yeah, that was that was definitely. I, I was talking the other day when we were talking about the Jimmy Graham surprise. I, I specifically remember I had a really good source, and I know they they actively that was the year they were kind of willing to trade almost everybody on the team, and. And I did prepare something because I, I think they were attempting to trade Jari Evans and, and they ended up getting a deal for, for Jimmy Graham instead. But I do have memories of that stuff all the time where you're like, you hear something's going to happen, you prepare to write it, you write it so you're not caught. Yeah, there's and so, it just goes nowhere. I got, I got a whole com like I got a yeah. whole computer full. Like everything, chamber, yeah, everything I hear that's a yeah. possibility, yeah. I'm just I'm ready for I'm just I'm getting ready for it. I'm not waiting to. Like, if it hits and then I'm like, oh, I better write about this thing I heard about six days ago. The last thing I want to do is be the guy that goes on Twitter and be like, this was swirling. You know what yeah, I mean? Right. Like, like, all right, well, why didn't they you do They were talking about doing this and now they've done it. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like if, you, if you really knew something and believed it, like, you yeah. would be ready for it. Like, yeah. I, I hate that. Oh, this, this yeah. has been in the works. Like, all right, cool. Well, have you been in the works? Like, obviously not. <laughs> like, I just don't want to be that guy. Like, I'm not going to get caught, like, if on something I had heard. Yeah. Working around you two guys, that. I've learned that, hey, you just got to be prepared. Whatever. Whatever happens, you just have to already be ready for it. Don't get caught I wonder slipping. if we have any, 
anything with the headline "Do not pu- publish in our system oh, they, right now." They're still in there. <laughs> <laughs> There's a bunch. There's a bunch of those. The yeah. one on the draft went out with that. Uh, yeah. yeah, when it went out. Yeah, I mean, it's just kind of. Mm. You know. did that on purpose, though, so everyone knew. I mean, <laughs> I mean, you dropped the story when the pick happens. It's, you don't really got to tell anybody. They say, "Wow, how did he know? Maybe I should follow this guy." Nick's all timer though was the. Nice. The the watching Zach Bond film when he said ready for tonight. <laughs> Picture of him watching Zach Bond film. A I did not. Easter, I did, I did, a little Easter egg. They drafted somebody on that one, and I didn't have a story ready for him. It was one of them, and like I knew, and that was one where I was kind of I, I wasn't I wasn't in the works on that one either. Come on, so, man. Yeah, so every now and then it happens, but um, yeah. I ain't never getting caught half stepping, dude. Once in a while, we got to do not publish in the system. This was. This was if they didn't get Kubiak, one of their backup choices. Uh, <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Which lets you know we knew Kubiak was the one they wanted. For sure, for sure. Well, that'll do it for this episode of New Orleans. Football. If you're already subscribed, stick around because overtime is coming up. And if you're not, camp is right there. So be sure to subscribe to New Orleans.football forward slash subscribe for the latest on the Saints. Catch you next time.